Well, it's not exactly the polar vortex, but this is really unusual weather. People in Seattle are so unfriendly. It's crazy. We are going to do Forza Monthly. Nothing stops Forza Monthly. We're going in right now. Come on, let's go. Like I said, it's, it's kind of unusual weather out there, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna bring you another awesome edition of Forza Monthly. Guys, I'm gonna step through here real quick. Hopefully I don't kill myself. What's up everybody? Welcome to the February edition of Forza Monthly. We made it. It is snowing out there. It's crazy out there. It doesn't look bad for people in the Midwest or something, but for Seattle, it's crazy weather. Uh, so I'm really happy that we were all able to sort of gather together and. Uh, team up to make this epi episode of Forza Monthly happen because it is bad out there. I'm joined by two Chris's. First of all, Chris Phillips from Playground Games. Welcome, hey, good man. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Last time we saw each other, it was much nicer outside and it was at Goodwood of all Sunny places. Goodwood, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was lovely. That was great. Uh, so yeah, lead car handling designer for Playground Games. What does that mean? What do you do with Playground? So I do everything from car handling, obviously it's in the tile, but I also work closely with the car production team to, to put car lists together and, and yeah, get all the cool new cars into production that, that we want and what our players want as well. And we're going to see some of those cars today. Uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up. We're going to give a little bit of tease of, of Series 6, which is right around the corner for Forza Horizon 4. Another Chris to my left, Chris Osaki. This is a familiar face. Oh, yeah. How you doing, man? You made it. Doing great. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. We made it. Brave the weather. It was pretty treacherous. It was a long trip. It I'm was. Sure. It was a very, very, very late trip but you know um parking was amazing yeah like <laughs> it's like a ghost town here <laughs> there was no one here <laughs> you can park anywhere you want yeah well welcome chris we're going to be talking with chris of course about the february update for forza motorsport 7 this coming tomorrow i've got a lot of stuff coming here in forza monthly not just today but next month's episode is really cool too but let's start with february because and and, and give you a, a a menu of the kinds of things you're going to see today because there's a lot to talk about let's bring up the rest of the show we can give you an idea of what to expect here in the February edition of Forza Monthly because there's a lot going on in the world of Forza. Uh, we've got that Series 6 sneak peek with our friend Chris here from Playground. Now, Playground Games is gonna be doing their own in-depth stream of Series 6, where we get a sneak peek today at some of the cool cars coming in and let you know some of the cool stuff that's happening in Series 6, so that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, we're gonna look at some of those car pass cars, absolutely, and some new outfits that are coming as well. Hopefully you guys will like that. We've got our February spotlight car, and I don't want to give it away, Chris Asaki, but you might be looking at it right now. Maybe, I think. It could be the <laughs> car, the very car that you're looking at. You remember back in January, we had the Barrett-Jackson car pack. We had a photo contest that we announced last month on Forza Monthly. We're going to see the winners today. You guys did an amazing job of really making the most of those very photogenic cars. We, And then we're diving into that February update. We've got some paint space updates I think you guys are gonna like and some other stuff coming in the February CU coming up tomorrow that I think you guys are really gonna dig. And like I mentioned at the top, we're gonna be taking a look at March, just a little bit of look ahead of what's to come because let me tell you, March is gonna be a big month for Forza. So um, cool stuff coming. So can't wait to get it, get involved with that, get, get it started. I think Chris, we gotta start with uh, Forza Horizon 4 and you're the car guy, so let's talk about some cars. Yep. So. Uh... For Series 6, we have the Final Fantasy cars, the Quartz Regalias returning from Horizon 3. Um, this, these are awesome cars. Uh, anyone that's a fan of Final Fantasy is going to really love these. And even, even if you've not played, they're, they're just amazing cars. Now, this, this car, of course, made its debut in Forza Horizon 3. It did, yes. It's coming back for Forza Horizon 4. Any changes, or is this the, the model that we saw in 3? This is the model we saw in 3, although... Okay. So this time, if we actually come out of the auto show, um, to better match Horizon, it's now got its roof down by default. Okay. Which is really cool, and that's that's how it's perfect to be. for winter time in Horizon. Absolutely, <laughs> you gotta right. have yeah. the top down. But as we were saying, this is one of the biggest cars in the game in terms of sheer length. Uh, yes, uh, 21 feet long. This thing. Um, the re Regalia LT. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there it is. That so, is. 
massive. Looking at the character for a size comparison there, it's absolutely wow. gigantic. Um, now, when you when you guys go and build, now obviously you built this car, but what's the process like? This is a car that came from another video game, of course, yep. Final Fantasy 15. I assume you work closely with Square to build a car like this. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we, we try and match the law of what the car actually is. Um, so all the data for it and things, we, we worked with Square on uh, if this car is in an authentic world, then, which it is in Final Fantasy, of course, mm -hmm. then then what is it, uh, like engine and, and things. So you can kind of hear on the uh, engine side there, we've got a lovely V12, which, uh, it's an odd but lovely soundtrack for a car like this. Um, I'm curious, when, when Square is talking about this car within the world of Final Fantasy XV, are they using traditional automotive terminology or do you have to translate what they call their engine into something that works for Horizon? No, we're, we're talking in the same terms. I mean, okay. <clears throat> it's based in reality, so it, you know, it, it's an en it has an engine, it has axles, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think the only difference, right, was uh, was all these requirements for anime hair. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's why, that's why the roof goes down. That's, why that's uh, goes more down. hair space. It's, it's why it's so long as well. It, yeah. uh, and with it's, some it's of the hats. Cords. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with some yeah. of the hats we've got in Horizon 4, it might, it might work. And the weapons, the large swords. <laughs> that's um, right. Oh, and the, the trunk opens up an auto vista in the front to, to get your swords in as well. Well, it's nighttime, of course, here, so we're not getting the best look at the, the car, but this. A fun car to drive. You were saying this car can surprisingly drift well. Yes, yes. Mm. So its length uh, kind of lends itself to drifting quite nicely. So longer wheelbases, longer like longer cuff. So the inertia, it, the way it moves, is quite quite slow. So give this thing horsepower and drift suspension, and uh, it's actually surprisingly good. Um, so with this as well, um, you unlock this car via a seasonal championship in Series Six. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you how. But we have another version of the regalia. Oh, so uh, this is this is not this seen is, before. This is okay. new for for motorsport. We have the Type D, which is the off-road version of it. Okay. So it's the same 21-foot-long uh, car, but jacked up a meter on these gigantic tires. Oh, we got to get back to the festival so we yeah. can see this thing. So. This thing is insane. You can take the short. Just imagine a regalia with a with a halo warthog sort of squished yeah. together, and you get an idea of what this car is all about. Yeah. Gone so oh, there you go. Final Fantasy meets Halo meets Horizon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's a great combination. Look at all that. They got some pipes on the side. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you saw the flames coming out from the pipes on the side on either side and the back. Let's uh, jump back to the auto show with this. Is, so yeah, this is probably the better. best place to show it off. So this is the Type D. This is a, a brand new vehicle. Was it based off of the regalia, or is it based off of, uh, did you build it brand new? So for the handling, we approached it in the same way we approached the Warthog, actually, which was to think about, right, so this car's been built in, I think, the year 723. Okay. Um, but what kind of tech would it have? It's a big off-road, it's all-wheel drive. So we've built it kind of very similar to a trophy truck, so dampers, spring rates, all that kind of stuff, as, as if it's a trophy truck. Uh, so it's a 20-foot long trophy truck. <laughs> If you, I don't know if you saw it at the nighttime, but like the driver just looks minuscule. Oh, absolutely in this thing. tiny, yeah, yeah. But it's got all the, all the, all what you'd expect from the quartz line. It's got those uh, center opening doors. It's got the the luggage racks in the front. All you would expect from the regalia line. And of course, this thing is made to go off road. Yeah, it's actually really good off road. So as I say, one meter ride height, which is, I think, the highest ride height we have in the game. Uh, okay. I can't think of anything higher than it. It's, it's a huge beast. Um, I mean, just the wheels as well, as we were saying earlier, about the size of a Peel. <laughs> <laughs> right, the wheel itself is the size of the Peel P50. Yeah. <laughs> Need a ladder to get in there. What kind of upgrades does a, does a vehicle like this have? Does it have any body kit modifications? Uh, I don't think it does, okay. no. no. Uh, I mean, it's pretty extreme as, as it is. As it is, yeah. yeah. So it's got the usual plethora of uh, engine upgrades, that, things like that. Uh, yeah, and to get this, as I say, you need to have the base regalia, which you win as a reward from a season championship, and you have to do certain things with that car, and you can unlock this one. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that. I think maybe we'll have more to say about it next week on the Horizon stream, yeah. but for now, we've got two regalias that we've seen so far. Uh, you'll be able to win one. Well, actually, you'll be able to win both of them. We're not going to give yeah. you all the details, but yeah, you'll, you'll be able to add those to your collection very soon. Uh, but that's not it. We have other a whole set of Series 6 cars coming as well. Yeah, we right? do. So if I jump into here. So we've got 
um, Cadillac Escalade. The, this is one of the car pass cars, mm -hmm. the uh, Eldorado. Uh, not quite as long as the Regalias, but uh, it's still pretty long at 17 feet. Yeah, a mere 17 feet. Yeah. yeah it's which, just a baby compared to the Regalia. Yeah. On British roads, that is huge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, Honda Prelude's returning. Nice. Uh, another wow. lovely Nissan there. Um, and then one of oh. our other car pass cars, the Griffith. We got to take this out. I don't care if it's dark or not. We got to get in this thing. TV, it's sort of like the return of TVR, right? Yes. So TVR, uh, many people know, unfortunately folded many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and they were recently brought, brought back from the dead. Um, and this is their first car after coming back, the, the new Griffith. And it's absolutely incredible. Um, I actually had the pleasure of seeing one uh, a year ago. Uh, down at Goodwood In person? Revival. Nice. Yeah. In person, this is an impressive Oh, you saw car. it at Goodwood? Nice. Uh, yeah, I was down there for the Revival when they did the unveiling of the car. Did they run it up the hill? Uh, no, they didn't. No, actually. okay. Um, but in person, this thing's absolutely incredible. Something you don't quite see from chase cam, especially in the dark, is the diffuser on this thing mm. is gigantic. Um, so, weird fact is it's, I believe, the second only front-engined rear-wheel drive car to have a completely flat floor. Okay. And one of the things they had to do to facilitate that is, you can't quite see here, but it's a side exit exhaust. Uh -huh. um, so it, it exits right at the front so they can have a completely flat floor. So it actually produces a lot of downforce, this car. So Which is not something you normally associate with TVR. No, You TVR's, think all power. Yeah, they're normally <laughs> incredibly Larry. Um, and this is still Larry. I mean, yeah. It'll still go sideways. It's 480 horsepower from 5 liter V8. Um, 1200 kilos. So it's still, you know, TVR terrifying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now we're downforce and things like that. So, um, and they're keeping true to, to how they always used to be. So very few driver assist. It's got traction control. It's got ABS. Uh, None. That, that's about it. Yeah, TVR is kind of like, here's a lot of power. Go figure it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's been the approach. But this is cool. I know there's especially TVR. The TVR brand, uh, you know, car fans know it, but that's a British brand. That's yeah. that's yeah. that's home for you guys. So yeah, this must mean a lot. It means, it really does mean a lot to us. In fact, this is my favorite car pass car so far. Mm. Um, and it has a good looking car. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone knows, but the reason it's called TVR is because the owner is called Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> he almost got it right with yeah. that. Yeah. It needs, uh, a t it needs an R in there, Trevor. Yeah, but yeah absolutely incredible car. And, and another reward car we've got in Series 6 to kind of celebrate the return of TVR is the 2001 Tuscan. So that's going to be available via a seasonal championship, I believe. So it's very cool. Very cool. Um, I kind of want to get this car on the highway and just let her go, you know? Yeah, it's quick, it's quick. Um, and it just, it has that sound too. It just sounds, it feels yeah. like it's dangerous and very TVR-y for lack of a better descriptor. That's awesome. So the yeah. Griffith is coming, the Tuscans, same week? Are they coming uh, together, do you know? Uh, I believe both in the same week. First week of Series 6, both of these cars are available. Um, so, Fantastic. Um, and we've also got some new clothing. Oh, excellent. Uh, some new outfits, so we can show that. Okay, let's check that out. So I'm wearing one of them just now, a classic gray suit. Uh, I, I love this. She I looks great. I absolutely love this. She uh, looks like she's ready to go. Yeah. And this will be perfect for jumping in one of the old Formula One cars we've got, uh, the, the like Audi Type D and things yep. like that. Yeah. Um, so alongside that, we have a chauffeur suit. Okay. Um, with hat, there's, there's a hat available too. And the Ken Block Gymkhana 10, I believe, race suit. So we'll pop that one on. Let's pop that one on. And that then looks cool. go back to hats. We've also got the helmet as well. The uh, old brain bucket. And all of these are also available as rewards for seasonal championships. Very cool. All of these things are going to be able to be unlocked starting with Series 6, which is very close. Uh, yep. Uh, we're wrapping up just now. Wrapping up Series 6. And you guys are going to have, uh, we were talking about earlier, you guys are going to have a uh, an update stream next week, I think, about uh, yeah. Series 6. Yeah. But before we get there, there is an update that is being, if it's not already out there, it's coming very soon. In right? theory, it should be out now okay. um, or in the next few hours. Um, we're finally, uh, it's a massively requested uh, thing, we're increasing the garage space. So you can have 750 cars, 500 tunes, 500 liveries, 500 vinyl groups, and 150 photos. Well, that community loves to hear that. They, they, they can finally up their creativity. They get collect all those cars, get all those liveries done. So that, if it's not already live, like Chris says, it should be live very soon. Uh, that's great news. Uh, well, that's not all that's coming with Series 6, though. We've also got uh, a new seasonal championship. Right? Uh, yep, street race seasonal championship. So similar to normal uh, seasonal championships, but this time with street races. So that kind of brings a new, uh, new take on it. It's really exciting. 
And we heard Torben back in January, he was here, and he was talking about a new Horizon story, sort of a skills-based Horizon yeah, story. Yeah, uh, well. Skill Streak, which uh, we're going to show more next week. All right, well, you guys don't want to miss that Playground stream coming from Playground HQ next week. We'll have more details about that here on the Forza channel and on social media and all of that, so look out for that. Chris, thank you so much. That was a great update. Can't wait for Series 6. A lot of stuff coming in there. Can't wait for all that. Let's take another quick look at the schedule with the rest of the show uh, because there's still more to come here in the February edition of Forza Monthly. Good stuff coming with our friend Chris Asaki talking about that February update for Forza Motorsports 7. Remember, we had that Barrett-Jackson car pack photo contest. We've got the spotlight car that you might be looking at right now. I'm not 100% sure. Paint space update, more stuff for the February CU, and then again, a tease of March, uh, because March is gonna be a big month for Forza fans. Now, uh, you might remember January was the month of the Barrett-Jackson car pack and the month of the kickoff of the year for the Barrett-Jackson auction series. We sent our own John Iwana down to Scottsdale, Arizona to check out what the Barrett-Jackson event is all about. Check out part one. Hello, Forza fans. I am John Iwana, and I am here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2019, where it is a spectacle for the car enthusiast. There is not another place that I know of on the planet where you're going to see such a wide variety of cars. I'm here with Craig Jackson, and uh, we're going to talk about Scottsdale 2019. Absolutely. We're in the middle of it right here. I mean, this tent we're in is the world's largest temporary structure on the planet. Two Guinness Book of World Records for the largest single marquee. 1,800 cars at no reserve, which has never been done before. We've got a great partnership between Forza and Barrett-Jackson. Absolutely. You know, I have a son who is a gamer, and uh, it was actually his idea. We reached out and put together, I think, a pretty diverse selection of cars. My Hemi Cuda convertible, an iconic uh, Hemi car, very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, my 32 Ford hot rod with Arden heads on it. The uh, Hula Girl, right? The Hula Girl, yep. which is a three-time Oakland Roadster Show car. Well, I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to meet you and talk with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. One of the most amazing cars out there in the world was, of course, the Lincoln Continental. And this is a presidential limousine, so it's extra long. What an amazing beast. I am here with Sean Finnegan of Chevy, and we are taking a look at the Transformer cars and what a collection of cars to have. Let's take a little walk around. So again, we did a lot of modifications with design input. We have carbon fiber wings. Carbon fiber wings were not an available option for a Camaro back then. Not back then, correct. And of course, we've got Bumblebee himself. Yes, this, right is, this is actually a private collector that coincidentally was selling the car here, and we just thought it was the uh, kind of perfect place to store it with uh, with his counterparts here. Is he on auction as well? He goes up on Saturday morning, yeah, in the automobilia. And you got to figure that whoever buys that is going to buy the car. We're hoping. you got to go together. We're hoping. Where else in the world are you going to see this many Ford GTs all together? I mean, right here, right next to me, there's three Gulf liveried Ford GTs. It's just... It makes you think that they're not even a rarity, but they are. I am here with Jim Owens, Shelby Marketing Manager. We've had an ongoing partnership between Forza and Ford. We've got a, a, a plethora of Fords and Mustangs, classic and new in the game. Tell us a little bit about what that means to Ford. So how do you experience this car without actually, if you're a 12 year old or if you're a 60 year old and you don't go out and buy the car, what better way to experience it than the game with Forza? Because I know that the Forza developers actually map all of those performance characteristics Absolutely. into the game in there. And so you get in that game, that real live feel, not only of the Shelbys, but of the Mustangs and out there beating the bow tie guys and beating the Dodge guys when you're out there running the Forza game. I am here with Nick Cardinale of Barrett Jackson, and we're taking a look at his 1970 Chevelle Custom. Nick, tell me a little bit about your car here. Well, it's got the 572 big block engine. It has 620 horsepower. You know, you can manual shift it if you need to. Um, okay. It also has a torque converter, so you can actually drive this car around town. Cool. And this car is in the Barrett Jackson car pack for Forza Motorsports 7. I, I was so stoked when I found out this car was going to be in the in the game. I also have my Bronco that's going to be in the car pack as well. You know that I want to drive that Bronco. That would be so sweet.
Is John Iwana in his element there or what? I mean, he gets to drive the Bronco at the Bear Jackson did auction. He, that... Did he ever come home? No, I think he's still in it. I think he's still... <laughs> Actually, we have a live look in of John Iwana right now because, as I mentioned at the top of the, sno at the, top of the show, it's snowing in Seattle, mm. which means the whole city's set down. But we, we've got a live look in from John Iwana. Let's go over to John Iwana's house right now and s see what he's up to. There he goes. Oh, there's Lola. Yep. Snowing. It's snowing all right. <laughs> Making the most of his time. Appreciate that, John. I want to have a good time. That's how it looks out here in Seattle right now. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to have more from Bear Jackson in just a bit. Right now, we're going to say hello to Chris Asaki again. Hello, Chris. And we're going to talk about all the stuff happening in Fortune Motorsports Sports 7. A lot going on. We're starting with a, uh, a free car. A free car in Indeed. the Luso. I love this. Yeah, so you saw it at the top of the show. This is, uh, we're giving away some Ferraris this month. May as well. And uh, I'm actually going to take this to the Alps because we're fantastic. Else? They like this. We got to go in to a snowsuit. <laughs> it's weird it. that he's wearing a helmet and a hat on top of the yes, helmet. It's but to keep the helmet warm. Yeah. That's right. It's a little known fact. <laughs> that's right. It increases the horsepower when your helmet's warm. Um, so yeah, we have a, a couple Ferraris uh, this month. Our spotlight Ferrari is uh, the Luso. Mm -hmm. And. Um, what better way to get groceries, right? <laughs> than this? Uh, it's a four-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. So it is the everyday Ferrari. It's the uh, <laughs> so this is the successor to the FF. Um, so it's got that really unique two gearboxes: one on the back of the engine, one on the front to drive mm. the front wheels. Um, made it up to that beautiful 6.3-litre Ferrari V12, 608 horsepower. So sounds glorious. And as we were talking about at the, at, before the show began, the, the the FF was definitely sort of a very controversial car for Ford, for our yep. fans. Some people loved it. Some people were like, "What are they doing?" But this is, as you were saying, Chris, a successor to that original FF. It has a lot of that style to it. It's a very long car. Yeah. But uh, but it's not a the, the FF was that a four door? I can't remember. But anyway, you can get the kids back there. <laughs> Shove them Definitely. in. They'll be fine. Definitely. There is actually legroom in the back as well in them. Crazy. It's a uh, space for a husky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go snow plowing. It's but a fun, fun car. Fun car to drive, but not the only Ferrari we're doing this month. Yeah, so we are giving away this car as our spotlight car. So there will be some, uh, there will be a spotlight event around this. Um, but uh, we were actually supposed to do some other events around another car that you would be awarded after the, uh, the event. But uh, we decided, you know what? It'll be better just to give it away. Let's just give it away. So um, our engagement team, uh, un once again, um, unfortunately, a lot of our uh, friends and family <laughs> yeah. uh, from the Forza um, teams could not make it out because of the snow. Yep. Um, a lot so of Jen them, couldn't make it. Jen could Jen not make it. So uh, unfortunately, you know, we say hi to Jen and her team. Um, they just decided, you know what? Let's give away a 599. Everyone's <laughs> going to get a 599 XX. 599 XX? Yep. I don't know how many Xs are in there, but at least, at least one. At least one. At least it's it's at least one extreme, maybe it's, two extremes. But yeah, the 599 X is coming. I think I think the Xs stand for free. Got it. Yes. <laughs> free, free? Let's just say that. Free, free, free. Free, 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 free. Let's do that. Yeah, so this week we're going to give away, you're going to get the Luso as the spotlight car. You're going to give away the 599 X. And that's a lot of that's a whole heap in a Ferrari for Forza Seven. Some fans. Ferrari yeah. fun this month. So I hope you guys enjoy it. There's a couple of good cars. So why don't we uh, why don't we take this car and put a livery on it? Oh yeah, let's do that. Should we? Why, should... why would you do that? Uh, you know yeah. because uh, because we've got some cool stuff that I think painters are going to be really happy about this month. You don't say. Yeah. Uh, I'm teeing you up there pretty well. I think you did. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, we were going to have. Um, you know, honestly, we were going to have a bunch of the art guys come on and talk about this. Mm -hmm. and, and in particular, Matt Collins uh, couldn't make it today, um, called in sick because of the snow. But really, he's one of the world's most diehard Patriots fan, yeah. uh, complete with a levitating Patriots helmet at his desk. Literally it's, magnetic. It's, it just rotates and levitates. Yep. It's like magic. That's how much he is in. Um, and so, honestly, I think he just set off too many fireworks last night and <laughs> That's right. couldn't make it in. But anyway, um, we heard a lot of feedback from um, from all of our painters, and uh, we we talked to a lot of our most ardent um, uh, painters in the community. We got a lot of feedback on the forums, um, and one of the biggest things was 
the ability to change the lighting. Um, lighting was the biggest issue that we had in the, in the paint space. So uh, come tomorrow in this, this update, we are gonna update uh, the paint space lighting. So when you go into apply decals or, or paint the car here, uh, you'll now see um, a new option, lighting options with the, um, well, would you, would I you call it the, the start, start button. button. It's, it's not, that's not technical. That's not no. Xbox terminology. No, nor is hamburger button, which no. some people call yeah, it. That's why I know it has. Hamburger, yeah, hamburger. Yeah. hamburger or start. Um, it's the one with the three lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you press the three lines button and it brings up these new lighting options. You have four new lighting options. Mm -hmm. um, you have ambient light and dark. There's ambient dark. Uh, and then sunny and and kind of a, a sunset-y type of, of, of setting. Um, every time you click on those, it'll randomize the sky just a little bit. Okay. Um, so it, it'll give you a variety of different sunny settings and sunset settings. Um, it, it should help you guys, all of our painters, kind of understand the different lighting conditions that uh, that the, the cars will be in. So um, should be able to, to tune this better for their lighting conditions. Yeah, we heard these. We heard people saying, "Hey, you know, it looks great." But I can't, you know, there's a corner, there's a, there's a weird angle on the car, and it, it, in this lighting, I can't see exactly how this decal looks or whatever the case may be. This is this is specifically for those kind of features, yeah, those yeah. kind of problems. That hopefully this helps solve that. Um, and funny thing with this space, you can actually, if you do the uh, the Forza Vista with the the right thumbstick, yeah, you can actually go into photo mode here. Um, okay. Oh yeah, with with Y. So you go into Forza Vista, then you hit Y for photo mode. Yeah, and you can actually, with these new lighting settings, um, take some interesting photos. Uh, it's and you can go above the car. You can get some really interesting angles here. I like this because you can see, you can get you can get a feel for the overall flow of the design that maybe you couldn't from a lower angle. Yeah. Yeah, but you can take photos here. Uh, if we go back to Forza Vista mode here, it's true Forza Vista mode. Chris. Right, true Forza Vista. You can explode the car. Mm -hmm. You can hop inside. You can see all the legroom in the back, like you were saying, Chris. <laughs> There's plenty of legroom back there. You can look inside. So here we are within the paint, this newish type paint space, but we're doing true Forza Vista here. They really leaned in on those air vents. <laughs> they're, just, <laughs> they're all in. Yeah. Extra exhaust. Exactly. How else you can hear the engine? That's right. Uh, so yeah, let's let's back out of this a little back bit. So here. yeah, okay. um, this is going to be live tomorrow. Uh, I, I we we really hope that this addresses a lot of the lighting issues that um, our painters have been having. So I'm pretty happy about bringing this one to life. There's also a fun thing in home space yep, now. Let's, let's head um, there. So. While doing this, we actually, um, in home space, we changed the lighting a little bit. Um, home space being... This garage type. The space. garage yeah. space. So the lighting is a little bit different now. Um, but more importantly, you can actually go into Forza Vista here. And in that mode, in the photo mode... Sorry, do you want, you want me to go to Forza Vista? No, this is, this this is, is, good? This is perfect. Okay. Uh, we now allow you, we used to have it so it, the, uh, the camera was pretty restricted. Yeah, in the, pretty much in the, like this. Yeah, but now you can actually go everywhere in the garage area in this home space. So you can actually have the camera go and see what's in all these nooks and crannies. What was behind that corner before? Nothing. A dark corner with yeah. nothing in it. But uh, you can go and explore all the space. Um, right over there, I think there was a... Oh, the whiteboard? The whiteboard, Oh, yeah. the whiteboard. So... Um, Luckily, there aren't any unannounced tracks here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Knock on wood. Yeah, let's look close. Um, and I'm sure there's some Easter eggs that the uh, the art team left in there, probably. I don't know. Uh, but that was actually from uh, one of our sprint, um, one of our production phases when they just took a photo of the whiteboard, and that's what it's always been. Um, oh, here's another whiteboard. Oh, yeah, it's the same one. Like it's like same one, I think. But yeah, yeah, you can explore to your heart's content and go all around uh, into areas that you never even could really see that well before, so. And, yeah. of course, take photos. Yeah. You can take a photo from this angle, which is interesting. You can also toggle the, the headlights of the car if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool as well. In fact, let me see. Oh, wrong one. There you go. Yep, pretty cool. Camera one, camera two. Camera, camera one, camera two. two, that's right. Very cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. cool. Some fun stuff for our painters and photos. Um, photo takers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good stuff. That stuff's coming tomorrow. The new paint space update, this new, what do we call it? Larger garage to explore yeah. in photo mode, all available to you with tomorrow's February update. 
Um, so we have this new paint space, Chris. We have uh, new lighting options people can check out and make sure that their designs are looking as good as they possibly can. And we thought to ourselves, well, why not put this to use? Of course. Let's open up a livery contest. Community so engage. We want you guys to, to create some stuff. And uh, here's what we've got going on. So this month we've got a livery contest. We want you guys to use that paint shop tool and create something cool. We want you to create a Forza monthly livery design. And so Copilot's going to put the rules, where the rules live on the forums in the chat right now. Basically, we're asking you guys to create a Forza Monthly car. What do you think a Forza Monthly car would look like? We're going to choose some of our favorites for next month's show and let you guys vote. And the winning car will be sent out to all Forza players. So pretty cool prize. Everybody's going to get the best. But we're really curious to see what you guys can do, how you take advantage of these new lighting conditions and the tools you have available to you. And uh, I hear Alan's going to wrap his Ford GT. In, That's in right. That yeah, he doesn't well, know this. He doesn't yet. know. Yeah, <laughs> but no. it's in the rules. So uh, co-pilot wrote him. There's nothing we can do. Well, Sorry about that. Our hands are tied. Yeah, <laughs> our hands are tied at this point. Let's so get get to work. We we can't wait to see what you guys create. You guys are you know so creative. Can't wait to see what you come up with. It's yeah. gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. And we also have some some other cool stuff coming with it. Yeah, we actually um, so we've been. Uh, hard at work at, at a lot of different areas of the game right now. Um, we had a lot of feedback. We had a, a force feedback update November, November now, I, I think. think. It's November, yep. Um, it, it's weird. I'm always three months ahead, five months ago. Right. And I don't know where we are, but um, I think we're in 2017 now. I, probably something <laughs> yeah. like that, yeah. Um, so coming in 2017, <laughs> uh, we have a. Another, You're gonna get us in trouble, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new force feedback update um, starting tomorrow. Uh, we heard a lot of feedback from our wheel users. Um, we have the the largest uh, and most significant force feedback update in ever, mm -hmm. pretty much in the Forza history. Um, some really great stuff. Uh, some of our, our wheel users reported um, some um, some oscillation kind of at neutral. Uh, no real things were, were happening, but um, there was kind of this oscillation and um, you, it was really hard to kind of dial it out, but also still have enough of the, the, the forces coming to the wheel. Um, so we looked at that. We actually did find a, find a bug in uh, the update. Mm. Um, not the update work that we did, but actually just in the, the overall force feedback code. Um, it was fixed in this update and um, crossed our fingers. It, it's fixed all the oscillation issues that, um, that we've tested and we've seen. Yep. Um, while allowing uh, all of the, the, the goodness to come through in the force feedback. Cool. So pretty happy about that one. Um, so, so props to uh, the team for, for fixing that thing. Um, Aaron couldn't make it. I, I know he's a, he's a favorite on this. Um, <laughs> another snow casualty. Another snow casualty yeah. as well. Um, so we actually did have a lot of guests that couldn't make it. Yeah. Um, but uh, but he, he could have spoken much more in depth about what the fix was, but um, there, there, there actually was an update issue uh, in updating the, 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 the feedback frame um, that caused a delay, I think, of two frames in getting the feedback and sending it, mm. um, which actually was the cause of the oscillation. So. Um, also coming, um, not this month, but in next month, as a little bit of a tease, we actually have um, a whole variety of stuff coming in, the, uh, another big batch of force feedback updates. I'm pretty excited to talk about, um, and I did want to tease one of them because it's, it's uh, directly based off of a lot of feedback that we got from the community. So um, the biggest thing about the change was that all of the forces that were delivered to, to the wheel um, via the new system was all based on the actual forces that the, the wheels were feeling. Mm. So uh, mass differences in cars actually played a big difference in how much feedback you were feeling. So if you're in a really heavy car, you would get a lot more force feedback than if you were in a really light car. Right. Um, it's just how the, the, the system works. So if you were in a lighter car and you kind of dialed the feedback to, to, to get pretty heavy um, and, and, and you know delighting you, on a heavier car, it would be too much and it would start clipping or, or vice versa. If you dial it in for a heavy car, you wouldn't feel as much on the lighter cars. Um, and one of the things that was suggested was like, hey, well, maybe we should have per car settings. Mm. Um, so guess what? That's coming. Nice. Um, next month, we'll see not only per car. It's not set per tune. It's not set um, per car. It's actually per garage car. So okay. if you have multiples of the same car, it'll be saved to that specific car. Nice. So there'll be scalers so you can kind of dial that all in, um, both um, on the lock-to-lock, soft-lock yeah. issues, 
um, as well as just the overall feedback scaler. So um, pretty big change for us. That's cool. Um, I want to I want to talk about the rest of March. Yeah. I realize I skipped a section. Let's go. We actually I want to before we get deep into March, I want to go back and talk about that Bear Jackson car. Oh that sure. Photo that we that we re referenced earlier. You remember back in January, we announced a, a photo contest around the Bear Jackson car pack. Uh, we had a ton of awesome. Uh, entries into this contest. In fact, if the guys could start rolling, I just wanted to show off some of the montage of some of these photos that you guys took. All with the Barrett Jackson cars. You see the Bronco there. The amazing job you guys did. Some with livery, some without. I love these. Basically, we asked people, take your best shot of these Barrett Jackson cars, and then we're going to pick our favorites. You guys and the winners are going to get some special stuff in Forza Motorsports 7. But guys, as you can see, the community killed it this month. I love that Hemi, that skull. I mean, Chris, that, that skull shifter, incredible, yeah. incredible, right? Wouldn't be that comfortable, but it looks awesome. <laughs> no, it reminds you of the bone shaker, like the spinal column up oh, on the bone. way up above yeah, the roof, yeah. Yeah, I love that. The, the Atomic Punk looks amazing. Yeah, you, this is what I love. You give, Chris, you give the community amazing cars to photograph and they're just gonna kill it. The attitude, the, the craft around these photos, I, I just, I'm amazed. Just utterly stunned at some of these shots. They're just so well done. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, these guys did an awesome job. So uh, those are just a selection of some of our favorites. We actually had three winners of the contest, and we want to call those out specifically. Uh, first of all, in third place, can we see the third place photo, please? Uh, this is, I know it's by Holden, 88805, so well done, Holden. Uh, we, we actually got some comments from people from around the studio. This is Holden shot 88805, Holden 88805, well done. I believe this was taking it prog coming right out of the tunnel, mm -hmm. love that track. Uh, Copilot had a comment on this. She said, this shot just screams vroom vroom, which is perfect summation of this shot. I love the shot. Well done, the, Holden. The color on that is uh, yeah. amazing. So well done, yeah. Over on uh, second place from our friend Noons, Great shot of the Bronco. Now you saw John Iwana driving this Bronco earlier. Uh, Shay, our media producer, had this to say about the shot. I picked the shot because it not only looks great, but it's a great representation of the Barrett Jackson Scottsdale auction. And it feels like it was taken at the auction. Aesthetically, there's a nice juxtaposition of shadow and light play without making the vehicle look flat. There's a good sense of speed and the hero camera angle is fitting for the Bronco. The location's a nice test too, since the auction takes place in the desert. And this feels like it's driving either to or from the auction event itself. Great shot, well done, Noons, great shot. And our overall winner for first place is a name that if you follow photo contests really closely, you know Rygos, you know this name, Rygos. Beautiful shot of that bubble top. Uh, Ian Yarwood Lovett, our franchise art director, said this, I picked this because the choice of lighting perfectly showcases this unique car's features. The glass stone picks up great highlights and the reflection really shows the material. Equally, the candy apple red paint has its entire dynamic range beautifully captured in harmony with the epic exposed chrome engine. All that with a really interesting and arresting composition top job. Now, if that doesn't sound like a franchise art director. I was going to say, that definitely came from an art director. <laughs> <definitely> <laughs> uh, me, I was like, it's pretty. It, it could. <laughs> me like it. <laughs> Shiny. Chrome. Uh, so well done. Congratulations, Rygos, for winning the Barrett Jackson Car Pack Photo Contest. Well done to everybody who entered. And that's Amazing. The, that's what we love. That's why we're doing the livery contest for the Forza Monthly Car, because we know you guys are going to come up big, and we can't wait to show off the cool stuff that you guys are going to create next month. Um, so, Let's, uh, speaking of Bear Jackson, we're going to talk, uh, we still have more to talk about with March. Right now we have part two of our trip to Bear Jackson starring John Iwana. Check it out. Right behind me is the staging area where the cars get their final touch. Amazing, I get to be so close to all these cars right before they go across the block. Let's go take a look. Oh my God, look at that. Where else are you gonna see a semi-truck four by four? Why do you wanna buy something like this? Something different, We all, we, I like the eclectic stuff. It's definitely different. Yeah, yeah. How did you come up with the concept of a Peterbilt Chevy truck? I bought the old Peterbilt probably 30 years ago. 
And then I had an old Chevy pickup that was sitting next to it, and I thought, well, I'm gonna try to put the cab on that chassis. Everybody's trying to do something that's no, never been done before, and that yeah. bar keeps getting higher and higher. I have to say, you nailed it. So you've got 23 cars that are going up for auction at Bear Jackson this weekend? Uh, 23 vehicles total. When you have that many cars, they kind of split your numbers up. Some are prime time and some are not. Uh, the prime time car that we have running today is we've got a 79 Silver Anniversary Trans Am. 400 four speed car with 4,000 actual miles. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yep. Appreciate it. Go Xbox. Woo! I'm here with Joseph Mast, one of the Bear Jackson auctioneers. Now, dude, you do something that very few people can do. What is that language you speak called? Oh, we call it our chant. You start with one, two, three, four, five, and, and then you start adding in, you know, little filler words. One, would you give two? Would you give three? And how many dollars on them here? And so many dollars on them there? And look at them right there. And how many dollars on them? Right, get now, what are you paying? Twenty-five and fifty. I get now seventy-five and a hundred. That is just amazing. And seventy-five to get now five hundred. Here to get now one seventy-five to get now five to get now pay one seventy-five and a half. I'm here with Bogey. <laughs> Tell me about what you do here at Bear Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. So every year, Bear Jackson has this restoration area where they have a number of tents that are here specifically to kind of do DIYs and demos. What did this start as yeah, so, on Monday or last weekend? So this started as an empty frame. They got the engine in, LS3, beautiful engine crammed in there. They got that running, just tuned it this morning. Uh, all the body panels went on, front suspension, rear suspension, AC unit, all the good stuff. By the end of the show, this will go across the block? This one will not. This one, Bear Jackson gets to keep. I am here with the king, Richard Petty. Sir, yes, sir man. very awesome Glad to meet back. you. Do you have any cars in the auction this yeah, we year? Got, we got one car that's in the deal. It's a wide body, the Ford deal that we worked on. And will you be up on the block presenting the car? Well, I'll be up there, yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks for joining us here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2019. I'm John Iwana. And I'm Richard Petty. See you next time. <laughs> thank you, John. And thank you, Richard Petty. Thank you, King. That was amazing. Not every day you get to talk to a NASCAR legend. Oh, for my NASCAR roots, yeah. seeing Richard Petty again, oh, that's amazing. 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 Uh, well, well done. That was a lot of fun from Barrett Jackson. Thank you for having us there. We had a great time. Uh, listen, I want to give you guys a recap of where we've been and where we still got to go because we saw, we were talking with Chris earlier about all the cool stuff happening in Forza Horizon 4 with Series 6. And we started getting deep into Forza Motorsport 7 with the February update because Chris and I just got started it's talking. I, let me make sure I know, you guys know what's going on. We've got the, the, uh, the paint space updates coming tomorrow. You talked about the, uh, the, the, the force feedback mm -hmm. update. Got a couple Ferraris. Got some Ferraris coming. Uh, we've got also a car loading improvements. What does that mean? Oh, so um, shout out to Mike Groden on this one. Um, so, <laughs> Mike. Uh, we weren't really sure if we were going to push this live or not, um, but we found a great, well, we're, the team's always looking at a bunch of improvements, mm -hmm. um, performance-wise, loading-wise. Uh, this was a, a pretty good find. Um, so in multiplayer car loading, sometimes loading to track takes, uh, well, can take a long time. Yeah. Um, so Mike found some improvements there. Uh, loading a full field can now save uh, 20 to 30 seconds. Wow. Uh, so it's a big, um, well, significant, big yeah, big improvement there. So pretty excited about that one. Um, should help uh, the multiplayer experience. Yeah, so look forward to all of those things. And then, Chris, we started talking about March. We just Yeah, so sorry, much. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> we, got, we got so ahead of our... That's okay, because March is going to be a big month, and we, we, we're we telling you about it now because we're really excited, and we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, there's so much to talk about in March. Um, there are a bunch of features that have been months in the making, in, in some cases uh, over a year in the making. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think you guys know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. with that one. But uh, we do have actually some drift updates coming. Yep. Um, we have uh, some force feedback updates coming. Uh, I teased some of that, but yeah. that's only about a third uh, of all the uh, the improvements that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's kind of a big month, and of course the unspoken one, which I, I do want to caveat that um, we're not 100% baked on actually shipping this next mm -hmm. month. Um, but our first hopper with uh, Forza Race regulations is should go live. Um, once again, I, I'm not committing to that yet okay. because we, we haven't actually put it through its paces. Um, but I, I did want to touch on how we we're going to roll that out. Uh, once again, for the next CU, right. we're looking at 
opening basically a beta hopper, okay. uh, a single hopper um, to get a lot of feedback around it. Um, but uh, it should be the first release of our reg race regulation. So. And the idea here is to, to learn. To yeah, there's a... Give, give a, a subsection of people a chance to play with it. Absolutely. Get some feedback back. I, there's, there's, um, it's, it's just, there's so much to learn about and, uh, and get right on this thing. Uh, I, I know you guys have been super patient, so thank you for that. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming. We're going to be first just looking at uh, track cutting and penalties assessed thereof. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of logic there. Um, some pretty good work going into that. Uh, and then following on, we're, we're looking at the collisions, mm -hmm. intent, um, and penalties thereof. Um, and we just had a good breakthrough, I think, uh, around, around that. So pretty excited about that. There's a lot of good work there. Yeah, so I know you guys are really curious about Forza Race Regulations. Development's still happening. We could see it as early as next month. That's, uh, that's what we're hoping on, yeah. Great. And yeah. that is not all. We have so much going out uh, still to come, including, as, as Chris mentioned, more drift updates. Uh, we talked about the more wheel updates as well. We also have some guests that we're working on that I think you will really like. Uh, we, I don't want to say the name yet because we're still working. We're still efforting this person in, in addition to some cool new drift cars that are on their way in March. Mm -hmm. And a guest that is separate from the one I just mentioned who has never been on Forza Monthly before. I'm excited. But it's someone you guys know very well. Looking forward to that. All of that is coming in March. And there's one more thing. Check this out. Well, I, do, do we even need to explain? I think if, if you know what that is. If you know what that is, you know coming. what that is. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, all that, more detail on that coming next month as well. Can't wait for that. Uh, listen, you don't want to miss this show in March. Subscribe to the Forge channel, whether you're watching on Mix, Mixer, on YouTube, on Twitch, whatever. Subscribe, because not only do we have Forza Monthly coming up in March, we've got a whole bunch of great shows coming this week and today. In fact, right after this, John Iwan is going to be hitting the streams to uh, play some Forza Horizon 4 and some Forza Motorsports 7. And then Shannon McIntosh will be following the post show with the post post show smack attack. She's going to be doing her thing here on Monday. And then you can see we've got a whole bunch of streams coming up, including Playground stream next week for Series 6 of Forza Horizon 4. Can't wait for all that. So lock it here on the Forza channel. Subscribe, break the knob off, and watch it 24-7 because that's what we do here. Anyway, for Chris Phillips. Chris, thank you so much oh, for being here. Great it's having really you. really good, yeah. Yeah, we had so much fun. Hopefully we'll have you again on the show very soon. Chris Saki, well, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Always great to be here. We're going to have you again. I know it. I know for a fact. Listen, thank you so much for being part of the February edition of Forza Monthly. Uh, stay tuned. John Iwana is next, and we will see you in March with the next edition of Forza Monthly. Take care, everybody. See ya. See ya.